It's Monday, November 14th, and this is now on HNN. My heart is broken for the victims and their families and for all who those who knew and loved them. Police have captured a University of Virginia student suspected of fatally shooting three members of the school's football team. Hear from an emotional player from Oahu. Got a whole future ahead of them. Breaking news, we've learned Jay Leno is recovering from burn injuries. Millions of kids are hoping for some magic this holiday season. I'm Naomi Ruckham with a look at the hottest toys parents will want to snag before they disappear. We've got all these stories plus an update on cruise travel. Are the selections of accommodations going to be limited? Yes. The demand has jumped just in time for the holidays. The details coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. We want to get started with this breaking news update. Police in Charlottesville have made an arrest in connection with last night's shooting that killed football players from the University of Virginia. That's right. Three of them were killed. Two others were injured on a bus as they returned back to campus after a field trip to Washington, D.C. Now, new at noon, we're hearing from Aaron Falmui. He's a defensive lineman for the football team who went to Kapolei High School. I don't know what to say right now. I just... I just want to say there was three young, great men, you know, on the way to become great. But, I don't know, man. What did you come up here for today? I came over here because this is where they got shot. And I just wanted to come over here just to be in their presence one last time. Now officials say the suspect is a former player on the football team. Deborah Alfaron with CBS News picks up our coverage with what else we know about the investigation. A tow truck removed the bus where the deadly shooting happened on the University of Virginia campus Sunday night. Earlier, school officials and police were in the middle of a news conference when word came that the suspected gunman had been apprehended. Just need a moment to thank God. <laughs> Breathe a sigh of relief. Police identified the suspect as UVA student Christopher Darnell Jones Jr. University officials say he played on the football team in 2018, his freshman year. He was no longer on the football team and hadn't been uh, on the team for over a year. Police say he gunned down fellow students as they returned from a field trip to see a play in Washington, D.C. Football players Deshaun Perry, Devin Chandler, and Lavelle Davis Jr were killed. This is an extraordinarily difficult day for our community and we need to comfort and support each other and those closest to the victims. Police say the UVA threat assessment team was aware of the suspect because of a comment he allegedly made in September about having a gun. There was also a separate alleged hazing incident, but witnesses didn't cooperate at the time. While the manhunt went on for more than 12 hours, students were told to shelter in place. We both slept in the library underneath the desk. I don't think it's uh, fully hit me yet what happened. Police have not released a possible motive. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Charlottesville, Virginia. President Biden met Chinese leader Xi Jinping face to face today in their first in person meeting since Mr. Biden took office. Ivan Watson has more from Bali. Despite years of acrimony between Washington and Beijing and recently deteriorating relations, the American and Chinese presidents came here to Bali and made it clear that they were here to talk to each other. And after a three hour meeting, they emerged announcing that they were going to reestablish lines of communication uh, between their two governments. Uh, President Biden had some very forceful words about where he thinks U.S. Chinese relations are going in the near future. I absolutely believe there need not be a new Cold War. We, uh, I've met many times with Xi Jinping 
and we were candid and clear with one another across the board. And I do not think there's any imminent attempt on the part of China to invade Taiwan. And I uh, made it clear that our policy on Taiwan has not changed at all. For its part, the Chinese government has formally declared that the two presidents agreed to have diplomatic teams that would work on maintaining communication. Their financial teams would continue dialogue and coordination across uh, macroeconomic policies, economic ties and trade, and that they would work together on a climate change issue. So all told, there does seem to have been some progress here, despite the fact that there's still enormous disagreements between the world's two largest economies. Uh, Xi Jinping came to this meeting uh, politically strengthened, as having secured a third uh, precedent-breaking term as leader of the People's Republic of China. And President Biden emerged here as well, politically emboldened after having better than expected results in last week's midterm elections. So perhaps there's an acknowledgement that these two leaders are going to be dealing with each other for the next years to come. I'm Ivan Watson, reporting from Bali. Breaking news from the world of entertainment. Jay Leno is recovering from burn injuries following a gasoline fire. That's what the former Tonight Show host told Variety. He also says he's going to be okay, but he needs a week or two to get back on his feet. Leno, an avid car collector, was working on one of his vehicles in his garage when it reportedly burst into flames. He's being treated for his injuries at a burn center in Los Angeles, according to several reports. Leno is 72 years old. Hawaii County officials received hundreds of applications for a housing buyout program for victims of 2018's Kilauea eruption. West Hawaii Today reports 820 applications were filed before they were due last month. It's set up to allow property owners affected by the eruption to sell their lots to the county for up to $230,000. County officials tell the paper the number of applications were higher than expected after a survey last year found around 600 people had interests. The program has a budget of just over $100 million, and officials say it's likely that there won't be enough to serve every applicant. Currently, deals have been reached with about 75 property owners. Well, TSA is under major scrutiny today after a man got through a checkpoint and onto a fight with two box cutters. Now, passengers say he made violent threats toward them. For more on this, we're joined now by Isabel Rosales. Now, Isabel, explain exactly what happened. Hey, Ashley, thank you for having me. Yeah, just days away from that busy Thanksgiving holiday travel, the scary situation unfolding on a flight. A man seemingly got past TSA checkpoints, security checkpoints, onto a Frontier flight with two box cutters. And now TSA admits that mistakes were made. In fact, we have video here of his arrest that we can show you all of this unfolding at Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport, where TSA security checkpoint agents, they discovered one box cutter in the man's carry-on luggage. Later, that man allegedly threatened passengers mid-flight to Tampa. The pilots there had to divert that flight over to Atlanta. Now the TSA is reviewing this incident, and it found that these TSA agents just didn't fully use um, all of the technology that was disposable to them, technology that they said uh, uh, would have found these two box cutters, and that agents failed to follow TSA protocol by actually returning one of the box cutters back to that man. Ashley. Wow. And yeah, yeah, you mentioned with the Thanksgiving holiday rush coming up, what does TSA say it's doing to prevent something like this from happening again? Right. So TSA is taking this very seriously. Of course, it's a serious situation. They are reviewing CCTV footage. Um, they found so far that CT screening technology was not fully used. This is technology that looks inside of your belongings, makes a, a 3D sort of scan. Um, the, the CT operator, TSA says, didn't find the box cutters. However, uh, the man's backpacks did make it into a physical search. That is where one um, agent, did discover one box cutter. The visible blades on that box cutter, they were removed, 
but then return to him, Ashley. That goes against TSA protocol, where typically with these prohibited items, you would throw them away. Uh, then those two box cutters went through, um, uh, rather the, the backpacks the man had, went through explosives uh, detection tests, underwent CT screening, but that second box cutter, that was not found. And as far as what happens from here, how does TSA learn from this? This incident, Ashley, has been elevated to the highest level of the agency. Um, the TSA agents that have been involved are now taken off of the line and placed on remedial training status. Regionally, more training um, is undergoing there in Kentucky, Cincinnati area for the screening technology. And nationally, a bulletin has gone out um, to warn all the TSA workers and put them at a higher vigilance level. Uh, that briefing, that bulletin that they're getting includes how to properly um, deal with prohibited items like box cutters, Ashley. And Isabel, do we know anything about this man who brought the box cutters onto the flight? Any of his potential intentions? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, there's not much we, we do know. Um, police have not identified him quite yet. We do have a government source that tells us the suspect was not a known threat to TSA. Um, what we do know is that he arrived at the TSA checkpoint Friday at 530. He showed ID, including a temporary Ohio driver's license. Um, and as far as intention, we spoke to a passenger um, who tells us that when the man got off, uh, got up from his seat to go use the bathroom, a different passenger told told him that he had a knife and that the man had made uh, threats of stabbing other passengers. So definitely, Ashley, a scary situation. Absolutely. Isabel Rosales joining us this afternoon. Mahalo for the time. All right, back out here live in the h &N Digital Center. We want to take you out on a window of the world live. Santa Monica Pier Ooh. right there. Yeah, I haven't seen this one in a while. Ferris wheel is up and going. Right now, the temperature there is 64 degrees. I don't know if you saw it, Ash, but I saw it on TMZ this weekend. Paris Hilton rented the whole pier and threw a big party for the celebration of her new company very cool yeah it looked like a rager <laughs> uh so again 64 degrees there as we look live it is 81 degrees here currently on oahu what will the rest of the week turn out to be here's guy hoggy Now, we'll see a few more increasing showers for Kauai today and increasing showers for Maui and for Oahu tomorrow. And then look like on Wednesday, we'll have just a few passing showers. So the trade and weather pattern will continue with morning and overnight showers. Most of the showers will be light. And the middle part of the day for leeward side should be fairly dry. So your seven-day forecast is looking really good. Uh, granted, again, a breezy today, lighter winds Wednesday, Thursday, stronger winds coming in on Friday. In fact, this weekend looks quite windy. But all in all, it's a long stretch of the best weather on the planet. As we inch closer to the holidays, cruises are once again a hot travel ticket. Now, the industry was heavily impacted by the pandemic, but with smooth sailing ahead, demand has jumped. Sam Brock has more on the holiday rush. With the holidays right around the corner, Cruises are officially crushing once again, buoyed by consumer confidence after a rough ride with COVID. From first-time sailors like Tuffy Kriegel, who's about to jump on a Caribbean cruise in December. Seven, eight days with my friends and experiencing life on a cruise ship. To families like the Stewarts in New York. The ships have never been cleaner. The elevators, everything they do is clean. Who hit the high seas for decades before COVID cut into their tradition but now it's full steam ahead. So no concern at this point about taking your family on a cruise? None whatsoever. There have been fewer outbreaks and the CDC removed its COVID restrictions in July. But over the weekend, a Carnival Australia cruise ship returned to Sydney with more than 800 people infected with the virus who were promptly isolated. Still, in a major shift, a recent survey found about two in three passengers say they're no longer concerned about catching COVID on cruises and demand for sailings has spiked. Are people going to pay higher than they ever have for a cruise? Yes. Are the selections of accommodations going to be limited? Yes. Are the ships going to be full? Yes. But are people going to have a great time? Absolutely. For travelers scouring for savings, travel experts say book the relatively cheaper interior rooms and spend more time outside those rooms enjoying the amenities. 
Airports across the country offer access to tropical locations so you don't necessarily have to fly to reach your ship. And you're more likely to find the best deals at busier ports like Miami or Fort Lauderdale. And use travel agencies for special packages on drinks and services. We might offer a private car and driver at a particular destination when it's a European cruise or something like a shipboard credit that could be 100 $200. With demand high for the holidays, here's where you'll find the most cruises between Christmas and New Year's. Miami and Fort Lauderdale top the list, but New Orleans, Texas, and even New York have offerings. Do you still see this as a better value proposition than going to a hotel and resort where food isn't included and all of that? 100%. You have your food that's top notch. You have, you know, alcohol packages. For a family of four to go away, and get all this together is really economical. And we've learned that Jeff Bezos, the Amazon founder, has awarded country star Dolly Parton the Bezos Courage and Civility Award. Now that comes with a hundred million dollars to use for charitable causes. Parton has been a champion for literacy and vaccine research during the pandemic. CNN just did an exclusive interview with Bezos. Here's what he had to say. Talk to me about choosing Dolly Parton. Well, uh, look at what she's done and, and how she's led her life. And the way she's done it, these bold things, always with civility and kindness. She's a unifier. You know, we have big problems in the world. And the way to get big problems done is you have to work together. We have too many examples in the world of conflict and people using ad hominem attacks on social media and so on and so on. You won't find Dolly Parton doing that. And when you think of Dolly, look, everyone smiles, right? Yeah. And all she wants to do is bring light into other people's world. That's all. And so we couldn't have thought of someone better than to give this award to Dolly. The nation is very divided right now on many issues. Do you think that the American dream is something that really is still attainable right now? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I think the American dream is, uh, is and will be even more attainable in the future. Look, one of the things that, that, I, that I don't like about the current environment is that I think there is a lot of division. I think that people use conflict as a tool to achieve their own ends. I don't think it's a good tool. We see sometimes in our political sphere, certain politicians criticize other politicians. They criticize their motives, their character. They call them names. Once you've done that, it's hard to work with somebody. And that's why we created the Courage and Civility Award, because we want to highlight people who don't do that. And we wanted to amplify their voices, you know, because we, the voices that are really negative seem to get amplified in this world. You know, when you go and you look at your net worth, it's too much money to even spend in a lifetime. Do you plan to give away the majority of your wealth in your lifetime? Yeah, I do. And, it, and it, the hard part is figuring out how to do it in a levered way. It's not easy. Um, you know, b building Amazon was not easy. Um, it took a lot of hard work, a bunch of very smart teammates. And I'm finding, and I think Lauren's finding the same thing, that philanthropy is, is very similar. It's not easy. Uh, it's really hard. And there are a bunch of ways that you, I think, that you could do ineffective things, too. So we're building the capacity to be able to give away this money. How do you decide where to put your efforts? There are so many places where you know, philanthropists and anybody who wants to uh, donate to charity, can put their money to work. I feel like you have to do things at two time scales. You have to work on the urgent, the here and now, the immediate, and you have to work on the long term. So the Bezos Earth Fund is sort of about this, it's a, it's a 10 year commitment to work on uh, these really big problems that we have on sustainability and conservation and restoration. The day one fund, where we do work on the here and now, the urgent food security, homelessness, transient homelessness. There's all kinds of uh, very er important problems in that arena too. Talk to me about this team that you two have built together. That's well, a good word. We're really great teammates and we also have a lot of fun together and we, mm -hmm. and we love each other. True. So I love how we work together. We always look at each other and like, we're the team. It's easy. You know, we bring each other energy. Um, we respect each other. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's, it's fun to work together. Well, if you're handing out a hundred million dollars, yeah, I, we can put a good, good use, right? For sure. We know some good charities out yeah. there. For sure. For sure. All right. Let's talk about some things you could buy. Well, you 
less than 100 million, but still way too much money, is what, remember this, we talked about this last week, those old Birkenstocks that belonged to Steve Jobs, well, they just st- sold at an auction at an astonishing price tag. The Apple co-founder loved these Birkenstocks. Clearly. These, yeah, yeah, they're well-worn. Uh, they went for $218,000. Woo! That is a lot for a pair of Birks. Uh, yeah, record, of course, for the highest priced pair of sandals at auction ever. So we'll have to see what goes to auction next from his catalog. I know there's a lot of Steve Jobs fans out there. Those old Macs and those old mm-hmm. computers just go for an extreme amount as yep. well. Yep. Another auction story, yeah, though. Yeah, Joan Didion fans will soon have a chance to own something that belonged to her. The legendary writer and style icon died last year at the age of 87. Now some of her personal items are being auctioned off, and the estate sale is causing quite a stir. Among the items available, artwork, photographs, books, and journals, even blank journals that she hadn't gone around to writing in yet. Also on the block is the oak library table where she wrote and a rattan chair where she often sat for photographs those glasses are killer all right so holidays right around the corner that means kids are making their wish list so what are the hottest toys this year here's naomi ruckham with the list the new pokemon squishmallow is one of the year's hottest toys if you don't get it now you might not get it correct yeah these are going to be sold out very very quickly they're only available in limited quantities the toy insiders marissa silva says the latest toy from magic mixies will also be popular the brand new crystal ball for this year and we are getting ready to conjure our mixie friend kids use a magic wand to reveal their own character about as interactive as it can get. Yeah, for sure. And what I love most about this, you can reset it and do this magic experience over and over again. Many toys have an educational twist, like the Coco Melon Learning Bus. So when you pop it in here, the bus will recognize which letter. So we'll say A. But if you want to go big. Some really cool 360 spins. There's the remote controlled Jurassic World T-Rex. He's got some great sound effects, oh, too. Try? Yeah. Oh. Dolls are in demand like these from the new Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie. And LOL Surprise has customizable dolls with 320 mix and match looks. The shades, the earrings, the dress, the hairstyles. You can really do lots of different things with these dolls. But no matter what your kids' hearts desire, be ready to spend more. Inflation is hitting the toy box for sure. We're really recommending that people build about 15% more into their toy shopping budgets this year. Unlike the past two years, toy companies expect to have plenty of supply. Still, you may want to snag the most popular items before they disappear. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. And speaking of Christmas, the city harvested this year's Christmas tree in Kailua in preparation for the annual Honolulu City Lights celebration. Now, the 55-foot cook pine was donated by Seth Cleveland Jr., and it's the second tree he's given to the city for the holidays. So after the tree was harvested in Kailua, crews transported it to the Blaisdell Center, where it will be trimmed and eventually set up at Honolulu Hale. The mayor's tree-topping ceremony set for December 2nd, and the official opening ceremony for Honolulu City Lights will take place on December 3rd at 6 p.m. That means